Well, hey guys, uh, welcome back. We've had some news go on here the last uh, couple days. It's kind of been all over the place. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard, but uh, I thought I would kind of break down a little bit of how this whole thing has has evolved, devolved, and just become just a big old mess, really. But before I get into that, again, I want to welcome you to the channel. If you are new or if you've been here before, uh, welcome. Hopefully you enjoy the content. If you do, it would be awesome and would mean a great deal to me if you were to, if you would hit uh, the like button and, hit, uh, and obviously hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to see how close to a thousand subscribers I can get by the end of the year, and I would greatly appreciate your guys' help with that, and, uh, you know, I'd love for you all to join me on the ride, so, yeah. So, yeah, it'd be awesome if you were to hit uh, like and subscribe. If you enjoy the content, hit that little bell, too, that you'll, that way you'll be notified anytime uh, I upload anything, you'll get notified of it. So, with that said... Mitchell Miller, and we've heard, you know, I mean, we've we've heard a lot about this kid, and it's not not good. A lot of this is this is not a good situation here. I mean, this you you talk you talk about a kid with baggage. Oof. In 2016, as an eighth grader, he's 14 years old. As an eighth grader, he, for whatever reason, just decided to be, you know, just a, a, a little 14-year-old little prick, apparently. And he racially abused and bullied a disabled classmate. And, you know, I mean, why, you know, why, why do that? I have no idea. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to go into exactly what he did, but what he did was just, just vile. Just absolutely horror, horror, horrible what he did. The sad thing is he wasn't alone. He had another, there was, a, there was another kid that did it with him. You know, just, you know, kids, dumb kids. But he is convicted in juvenile court. And he is sentenced to community service. Now, being, you know, juvenile, and, you know, he's convicted in juvenile court. So, normally from what, from, you know, any, like, law-type show that I've ever listened to or, or watched or or even, you know, out in real life, if you're, con if you're convicted in juvenile court, the... The case normally is sealed because he's a minor. Well, apparently it didn't stay sealed because the news came out not too long after he commits to the University of North Dakota. Now, the news is out there that this happened. He commits to the University of North Dakota. Which, I have no doubt, would have made them a really, really hard team to beat. Because, from what I've been seeing hockey-wise, this kid's pretty good. But, there's this baggage around him. And, for whatever reason, the Arizona Coyotes draft him in the fourth round, 111th overall. Now... The Coyotes knew that this issue was going on, but they drafted him anyway. And not long after that, when they drafted him, the University of North Dakota also got word of this conviction. UND, not wasting any time, dropped him from their program immediately. I mean, they were like, no, we're, we're not doing this. We are not having this. We're not going to have this, this media firestorm, you know, 
completely all around us because it, it has become a media firestorm. And it's, it's just, it's crazy. But the Coyotes, then not long after drafting him, they rescind his, uh, his draft rights. So, you know, he is, he's no longer property of the Arizona Coyotes. He's basically a free agent, really. So, 2020, 2021, he does not play any hockey. Which, I mean, I guess you can kind of maybe understand why. And, but in 2021, 2022, he does play for the Tri-City Storm for the last two seasons in the USHL. Now, one thing about all of this, a lot of this issue here, is the fact that he, he didn't have any, he, he apparently had no remorse for what he did. He didn't apologize to the family, or at least he's said that he's apologized, but the family has come out and said, we haven't heard a thing from him. So we don't know, really, if he, if he apologized or if he didn't. He's he's gone and said that, you know, he's you know, he's sorry for what he did, you know, he's he's showing sympathy, you know, and he's he's he just he wants to move on. Well, the family looks at it as okay, so he's he's gonna get to move on, he can move on just all well and good and make millions of dollars potentially because he's good at hockey. Well what what about you know what about our son? That's what, that's the way the family's thinking. So he's playing for the Tri-City Storm. And just a few days ago, as the Boston Bruins are having a, an incredible start to the season, they're 10 and one on the season at the time they do this. November 4th, just a few days ago, they signed him. They sign him to a contract, which immediately sets off bells, whistles, flags, everything. And it just, it was like, just the minute they signed him, just boom, you know. Even though the Bruins, uh, Don Sweeney apparently had, uh, you know, Don Sweeney, Cam Neely, they had all, they, they had apparently spent time with him. And his family, you know, trying to get to know him. And, you know, they thought, you know, well, he might be a good asset to our team. So they signed him. Not necessarily realizing the backlash that would come. Because backlash, boy, did come. And apparently they did not... They did not run the signing past the National Hockey League where they, they've said he's not eligible to play in the league as of right now. And uh, Commissioner Bettman said he may never be eligible to play in the NHL unless he does a lot to show that he truly is sorry for what he's done. And I think they would have to get the, you know, I mean, before they would ever you know, make him eligible to play in the league, they would probably have to run it. They'd, ha they'd have to be talking to the family. How do you feel about this? Because, you know, they still don't, they still don't see him as being truly sorry and sympathetic for what he did. You know, he, he apparently still, according to the family, has not taken the onus, the ownership of the fact that he did that. He did these things to this kid, to this classmate of his. So, what ends up happening? It also took some Bruin players by surprise. So, all of a sudden, there is there is a giant outcry over this over this signing, because it was looking like he was going to report to Providence. Because, I mean, they signed him to a contract, so they were going to send him to the AHL. He was supposed to report to Providence. Well, I'm going to guess now, he's not going to be reporting to Providence. 
Because two days later, they signed him on November 4th. No, on November 6th, the Bruins rescind the contract. Because of the outcry of, of, uh, of fans, of the family, hell, of, even, of even the league itself. The league saying, they did not run this by us. We didn't know they were going to do this. So, you know, that's kind of a big thing right there is, you know, you kind of got to let the league know whether you're signing this player. Because, I mean, you kind of got to run it by them. But there was also talk, and I'm not sure if this is actually true or not. There was talk that they didn't even run this by ownership in Boston. They didn't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that is true or not. But if it's if it is true, man, if I'm the owner, I'm 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 extremely pissed. If I'm I mean if I'm Jeremy Jacobs or or uh, you know his sons. They didn't run this by us. They just they just went and signed this kid and without letting us know, without letting the people who sign the checks know. Yeah, I'd be pissed. If I were the owners, I would be very very upset. Now again, we don't know if that's true or not, but I guess in a way it wouldn't surprise me. But it's just this this whole thing just seems really weird. I mean, why would you go? Why why would you go behind the owner's back to sign this kid? Why would you? Why would you when you are ha when you are having a ten and one start? Why would you bring all this heat on top of you? This kid, he may be a fantastic hockey player. This kid right now is about as toxic as you can get. I mean, there is no other player right now in the hockey world that is as toxic as Mitchell Miller is. I mean, uh, there was the one kid, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Let me know in the comments section. Montreal drafted him because there was a big stink around him. And uh, I cannot remember, I cannot remember the kid's name right offhand. Let me know in the comments section if you remember his name because it just, it escapes me right now. But Montreal drafted him their last pick in the first round. And he wasn't even supposed to be draft eligible because of something he did. I think it was something he did over, over in Europe. Not a good still not a good thing. But I can't I can't remember who he was. But uh I think it was a similar thing there where Montreal had to rescind his uh his his draft rights. But this is, I mean, this is, I don't know what it is with young, with younger kids and, and doing stuff like this. I mean, I just, I don't get it. I really don't. I mean, I understand, you know, a lot of people will say, you know, well, you know, he was 14 years old. He's like 20 now or 21. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, you should, you know, you know, they always talk about second chances. You know, everybody should get a second chance. I do agree with that. Everybody should get a second chance. However, though, you've got to show some contrition here. You have to, you have to prove, you have to prove that you're worthy of this. And you are, you need to, I mean, if I'm this kid, if I'm this, I mean, if I'm, if I'm Mitchell Miller, I'm going to the, I'm going to the family. I I'm I'm almost getting down on my, on on knees here and saying, you know, I you know, I was stupid. It was stupid. I wish I never would have done this. I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but you know, I I want to make amends. I want to do whatever I can to you know, to you know, be forgiven here. But he hasn't done that, or at least he hasn't done that to the extent that the league wants. So I mean, unless he unless he really gets gets his crap together, unless he really gets that together, this kid may not may not ever have a future in the NHL. 
I mean, he's going to have to do, he's going to have to do some serious soul searching inside. Does he really want to be an NHL player? Because he has got to do, there's a lot of things that he's going to have to do that he's got to prove himself to Gary Bettman, to Bill Daly, to the National Hockey League, to, to, to the family, to the teams. He's got to do a lot to prove himself that he is worthy of being in the NHL. And it was interesting hearing some of the Boston Bruin players say that they were just, they, they couldn't believe that they that the Bruins did this. I mean, you know, Patrice Bergeron goes on and said, you know, what, and was just taken aback. And he's like, I, I don't understand why, why, why did you do this? You know, where it's, you know, we're, we're 10 and one. We're not really, you know, this, this isn't what we need right now. But they did. And, and it's not, and it wasn't just Bruin players. It's other players on other teams that are, that are like, we don't want nothing to do with this kid. And I don't know. I don't know what his future in hockey is going to be. I have a feeling that as of right now, he's not eligible to play in the NHL. Being that the Bruins rescinded his con rescinded the contract, he most likely is not going to be eligible for the AHL either. So, you know, he's been playing in the USHL. He may continue to play there, but if he's but if he's wanting to try and play professionally, he may not have a choice. He may have to go over to Europe. He might have to go over go over to the to to one of the European leagues. He may have to go to the KHL. Something. If he wants to continue his hockey career, he as of right now, he's not going to be able to do it here in the States. No way. There's not a team that's going to touch him. Especially after this, after what the Bruins just went through, there's not a team that's going to touch him. Now, there were rumors the reason why the Bruins signed him was because there were a bunch of teams that were looking to sign him. And Boston just said, well, you know, if he's going to get signed by somebody, you know, the, some, you know, some other team, well, we, we better beat him to the punch. <coughs> not realizing the the house that comes crashing down on their heads. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens with, uh, with Mitchell Miller. I don't know if he continues to play in the USHL. I don't know if he goes overseas to play. He may, he, I mean, if he's wanting to, to continue his professional career, he may, he's going to have to be paying a lot of dues, I think. He's going to have to be in the in the KHL or one of the Swedish leagues. But, uh, yeah, as of right now, he's not eligible to play in the NHL. And per the commissioner, he may never be eligible. I guess it's a wait, it's a wait and see to see what he, whether or not he is, ends up being eligible. But there's a lot he's got to do. A lot that he's got to do to prove himself. And I really, I, I really hope he can do that. I hope that at some point he can go to the family and truly show sympathy, truly apologize, and literally be like, I don't know what the hell I was doing. I don't know why I did what I did. But, you know, he's, he's got to make some major amends here. And that, to me, that's his only chance of of being able to get into the NHL is to make amends for all of that. Sincerely apologize to the family. I mean, grovel if you have to. You know, you've got to be sympathetic. You've got to be contrite. You've got to be apologetic. And you have to mean it. It has to be meant. You can't just go and say this stuff and then be and then and then walk away and be like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean any of that. Not going to work. Not going to work here. So, so, you know, what do you guys think? What do you think Mitchell Miller's uh, future in hockey will be? Do you think he ever plays in the NHL? Does he have to, does he maybe have to go overseas and prove himself there? 
is he ever going to truly apologize to the family for what he did? I hope he can, and I hope he's sincere about it, because this kid apparently is pretty good. And from what I've heard, for you know, for him being pretty good, you know, I'd like to see him be able to prove it in the NHL. I really would. But he has to do those things first. He has to apologize. He has to be sympathetic. He has to he he has to go on bended knee here to the league, to the family, to everybody. And truly show, you know, sympathy and and apologize profusely for it and mean it. We'll see if he can do it. I'd like to know what you guys think. Do you think Mitchell Miller ever plays in the NHL? And if he if if he does, when do you think they might make him eligible? Will it be one year, two years, five years, or could it be never? Or do or do you think they never make him eligible? I'd love to know what you guys think. Uh, again, I uh, I thank you for being here. I uh, I hope you enjoyed the uh, enjoyed the content. And uh, if you haven't done so already, whether you're new or you've been here before, if you haven't done so already, hit like and subscribe down there. Like I said, I'm trying to see how close to a thousand subscribers I can get by the end of the year, and uh, I uh, I would appreciate the uh, I would appreciate the support, and uh, you know, would love to have you all here for the ride. So again, let me know your thoughts. I'll put the link to the Discord in the description, and uh, and yeah. Crazy stuff. Crazy, crazy stuff. Let me know what you guys think. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll talk to you guys later.